Great, thank you. I'm going to call to order this uh, special committee on reducing red tape meeting. It is Thursday, August 15th, 2024 at 521 p.m. Thank you folks for being here. Obviously this is a new setup and we're in a new space. Uh, but before we get started with this listening session, I want to uh, one, say thank you to SLDC for being our partners in today's hearing, but also the ongoing work for our committee. And then hand it over to our lovely host um, for uh, being here and um, providing all the support. So thank you, Austin Vasquez. Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to the Northside Economic Empowerment Center. How many in this room have been here before? Oh, wonderful. Well, if you have been here, welcome back. And if you've not ever been here, welcome. Um, we are the Northside Economic Empowerment Center powered by SLDC. And under that umbrella, we happen to be in the uh, platform of a entrepreneurial center that is broken down into many hubs but technically the two hubs it's two hubs and it's the business hub and then it's the contract and compliance hub um, I work under the leadership of Ms. Stacy Fowler who is the senior vice president of economic uh, development and so um, what we do here we are a strategic centralized center that focuses on business empowerment building capacity and workforce development and certification and so under this umbrella at the Northside Economic Empowerment Center we get the opportunity to work with businesses to help them either get started or if they just got started or if they remain, if they have already been in business, they get the opportunity to be successful um, just at a more uh, fluctuating level. Also under our umbrella is the Business Assistance Center. And so we get the opportunity to educate holistically um, about how you can legitimize your business dreams and we can provide those wraparound services. What we found was that a lot of our businesses do not have all the components they need to be successful. And we get the opportunity to do that right up under this umbrella and over at the Business Assistance Center, which is located in um, the City Hall, as well as our corporate office where you would meet Marla Roach, who is the manager for contract and compliance. Aretha Lattimore is the manager for the Business Assistance Center. And then we also have Mr. Lennox Lamb, who is over certification. We are super excited that, you know, um, certification um, has been brought back in house and we get the opportunity to start working with our MNWBEs to help get them certified starting September 1. So I wanted to just thank you all so much for coming. Um, I know that there's going to be a lot of information here and we hope that you ask all the questions that you need to ask. But we also hope that this won't be your last time coming to the Northside Economic Empowerment Center. Uh, we get the opportunity to serve the entire city of St. Louis, businesses and residents. And so that's what makes the, um, our jobs all very rewarding. So welcome to the Northside Economic Empowerment Center and we look forward to networking with you today. Thank you, Ms. Dodson. Um, so as I previously mentioned, um, why this is a committee hearing, and right now I'm a committee of one. Um, <laughs> we're. This is also a listening session. So, um, Madam Clerk, I think can we hold off on calling roll for now? Um, so, what we're basically going to do is, and the goal of today's uh, session is to hear from business owners and folks that uh, can tell us what we need to do better in the city to help them. So that's what we're going to start off doing. Um, some other committee members will be coming in, and that's okay. We'll take care of our sort of official committee-like business. But right now, we want to hear from you all. So what I'll do is we'll give people five minutes a piece for testimony. Um, and um, Madam Clerk will be keeping time, and we'll go ahead and get started. So we have a couple of folks, I think, who've signed up to speak. Great, sir. So if you could hold up your right hand and do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Uh, so, um, yes. 
Great. And if you could just say your name, um, if you know your ward and um, or how you interact with the city and then tell us your story. Uh, sure. uh, my name is Marcus Smith. I'm the overall accounts manager for Gateway Security Service. Uh, our office is actually headquartered out in West County, but we service throughout the entire city, especially in the uh, north side area and throughout the downtown area. Um, one of their concerns that we thought we would be perfect for this uh, committee that we wanted to bring to attention was um, the red tape that comes with getting a security officer or an individual licensed to work as a security officer in the city of St. Louis and County, since that is a joint license between both the city and county. Uh, one of the hardships is that when a person has to have a background check done and they may not work as a security officer until a background check is done and completed, uh, which can take anywhere from five to 15 or more days. So that means that someone can't work for that long and many of our officers are typically working paycheck to paycheck, things like that on a typical basis. And we lose a lot of uh, good applicants and potential employees due to that waiting period. Uh, other counties, such as St. Charles County, where they will issue a temporary license uh, immediately upon the application and fingerprinting process, and then they will do the background check and have it completed by the time they do their actual basic security certification class. And if anything comes out of the background, of course, at that time, the parole person after the class let them know they cannot be a security officer, but they're able to at least make some money until that class is started. And so we feel that that would be something that would help out many of the security companies and security providers in the city to be able to hire folks and get them working sooner and faster uh, rather than waiting for that background process. That's, that's my biggest concern. Okay, great. Well, hold on, Hank, yeah. stay up there yes, for just sir. a second. Um, I know my colleague just joined us, but do you have any questions? I think maybe I'll walk in on a <laughs> Yes, ma'am. So I just want to make sure I understood what you were saying. Um, are you talking about basically a temporary license or permit to start? Right now, the they are not even not, they don't even get a temporary permit until that background check is completed. So they're waiting in limbo for anywhere on average five to 15 days. I have some folks who wait as much as a month before that background check comes back. And so that means they're not making uh, money or anything like that. They're sitting in limbo waiting for that to be done. And some folks can't do that if they have to feed their families and pay rent and things like that, waiting a month if you're living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. That was my other question was the time length right now. Thank you. Great. Um, and I just want to just clarify too for you. So you're, you're, um, you're talking about that you, your company does the background check? No, ma'am. The city does the background check? It's done conjointly. With, it's under the uh, Actually, So the folks at home can hear you because this will be recorded. So this, the licensing is, is a uh, combined effort between the uh, city of St. Louis and the county of St. Louis under the, uh, both the city police department and county police department. Uh, it goes under the auspice of the private security division, and they're the ones that do the background check. Great. Well, thank you, sir. Any questions? All right, Madam Clerk. The other, the other ones. All right. So, would anybody else, while we're here, like to share about your experiences working as a business owner in the city? Can we just get a raise of hands of how many folks are business owners here? You're a business owner? Have any thoughts you'd like to share? I promise you we're nice. We don't bite. We don't bite. Right. So if you can raise your right hand, you can you can grab the mic too. I know it's probably a little if it's easier for you. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I have that same uh uh sorry. Good. Great. Thank you, sir. If you could raise your right hand and do you swear to 
tell us the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I swear. Thank you. And if you could tell us your name and if you know your ward and a little bit about yourself and you've got five minutes. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, uh, my name is Fallon McMiller. Um, I'm Fallon. Yeah. Is it on? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? I'm sorry. Okay, so my name is Fallon McMiller, and um, I'm actually like, I just, well, I've been having my business, it's going to be seven years um, in September, September 16th, and the thing about it is I don't really have a lot of opportunities. Granted that I'm young, I'm only 23, and I've been doing this since I was um, a teenager in high school. Uh, I don't really have, like, a lot of opportunities to showcase my business. And granted that I always go to the networking events, like, um, I do a lot of stuff, like the SLDC. I be on their um, they Zoom networks and stuff, and then I be... I'm sorry, y'all, I'm nervous. This is my first time, like, actually voicing my concerns. But, like, I don't really have a lot of opportunities to showcase what I do and who I am. I only have them opportunities if I go to networking events or, like, um, if I do pop-up shops or whatever or just by word of mouth. And it's like I see a lot of people who have those opportunities, and the opportunities sometimes they, like, cost a lot just to get a little bit of knowledge. And it's just like... I'm only 23, I don't have that kind of money, you know, to try to gain that knowledge, but I try to do it as best as I can, but I just feel like it should be enough, a lot of uh, opportunities for people my age that's starting to get into owning their own businesses. And, um, yeah, so we can have that chance to be on the higher levels like the other people are. Can you tell us a little bit about your business? Um, yes, my business is called Hair Where I Found. Um, I sell bonnets, do-rags, um, pillowcases, just stuff like to help with your hair, protect your hair. It's for kids and adults, men and women. Um, anybody can wear my products and it's just like I be having a hard time showcasing my products because I don't have the platform. Well, thank you. We're going to go to the committee for questions. Do you have any questions, Older Woman Sonye? Um, well, first, thank you. I'm glad you spoke up. I think it's really important um, that, you know, we take our opportunities to put things on the lens and to voice the needs. I think your testimony is the first time I've thought about um, entrepreneurship in connection with age. I think we've been looking a lot at processes and systems. I don't think we've started talking about um, different demographics just yet and specific challenges that each demographic may have, which is why I think it's excellent that you talked. Um, I don't know if I have like any specific questions for you outside of, and I think it probably varies place to place. Um, are you more of an online business? Can people order your products online or do you do personal pop-ups or? I do both. You can, um, you can order online. Um, you can DM my business page and say, hey, I'm looking to purchase some stuff. I'll come to you. We can meet up. Like I do everything. I do pop-up shop. I even like keep the inventory on me just in case I, like, I'm telling somebody about my business and they want to um, shop. I just show them some, what I got, how my products look, how, the quality of my products, and it just I go from there. And do you often work with the Business Assistance Center in the city? Have you ever um, worked with that specific office? Yeah, I actually, um, like I, I take a lot of entrepreneurship classes. I took one, I just recently graduated from her, so. so Congratulations. I, thank you. I took the Mecca class at Hearthstone, though, and then I took the um, entrepreneurship class at Better Family Life, and then I took the entrepreneurship class for Bank of America. So it's just like, I really be, if it's an opportunity that I know I can do, I always take the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Roman. I also just want to say thank you for testifying here, and i um, going to shout out our next listening session, which will be back at City Hall. I think it's September. It's later September. We're actually focusing on pop-up shops and vendors. So if you'd like to come and, and share your thoughts there, and we'll definitely take what you send to consideration. Like Alderman Sonye said, I hadn't thought about the age piece tied to entrepreneurship. Um, my other question for you, too, and feel free to answer 
however makes the most sense. But do you, have you had something that we've heard about is that uh, for like pop-ups or mobile vendors, it's hard to get a license or it's difficult, the process is difficult. Have you found something? Um, so the business, like as far as like getting a business license, it has been kind of hard for me because like I know the direction to go to, but I don't like know the actual people to help me and to, I mean, to get the necessary things. I just try my best as I can, like, to, like coming to events like this, because you never know, as long as you speak up, you never know who can help you. So that's why I always just try my best to come to events to voice my concerns, because I never know who can help me. Well, I think we have a room full of people who can help. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, but, but that, thank you for sharing. And that is one of the things that this committee is trying to work on is to figure out one, a way to streamline the business license process, because we heard it's really confusing and you've got to go to multiple places and mm -hmm. some offices are only open during certain times of day. And then for other kinds of businesses like pop-up businesses that there's not really a clear solution. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I think this committee wants to address. So we thank you. And then I see Ms. Lattimore has her hand up over there. So she, this team can help you with that business license process. It doesn't mean it's easy, and that's something that we want to work on here, but you've got some folks in the room who can help you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Is there any other business entrepreneur here who'd like to speak? Promise we won't bite? No, we said that twice, but we mean it. <laughs> All right, well with that, should we, Madam Clerk, do you wanna call, kind of do the beginning of the meeting? <laughs> In the middle of the meeting? Uh, say that again. And I don't think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can we call the roll? Yep, call roll, and then we don't have, we can hold off on voting on minutes next time. Alderwoman Spencer? <laughs> Alderman Odenberg? Alderman Ryan, Alderwoman Clark Hubbard, here. Alderwoman Keys, Alderwoman Sonia, present. Chair Velasquez, present. Alderwoman Spencer, Vice Chair Odenberg, Alderman Ryan. We have three present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And just to see you folks know, we usually do this at the beginning of the meeting, but we are we are flexible and adaptable, just like our entrepreneurs. So. Um, board bills for review, we have none. We're holding off on approval of the minutes. We have no resolutions for review. Um, since I have my lovely uh, alderwoman here, is there anything that you all would like to discuss from this listening session? Anything, any comments just on the work that we're doing or what we've heard? Good evening, everyone. I'll just begin with an apology for being late. I have uh, what I love about STL TV and our relationship is that I've been able to keep up with this meeting while I was in another meeting that ran over. And as soon as I could get and tip out of that one, um, I got down here because why this conversation every time we have it anytime we have it is important to me i have a unique connection with you all because i've been an entrepreneur in the city of st louis prior to being an elected official so i've experienced opening closing right businesses here in the city of st louis and so i always want to afford that um hey use my mistakes as examples i talk to anyone about the things that i did when i owned um t two successful businesses in the city of st louis that had to be redone and re removed and remodeled and just the different challenges that we did not have a resource like the Northside Empowerment Econ Economic Empowerment System 
center in place at the time. Had we had this, my experience might have been different as well as other people that I have worked with uh, throughout the years here in the city of St. Louis. So um, I signed up to be on this committee because of that unique experiences, because what I brought, think I bring to the table and my voice and being able to help people. I love this infusion of dollars, funding, resources, time, testimonies to North St. Louis this way. And so uh, I thank you for your, Madam Chair, for your intentional efforts to come over here. Again, I apologize for my tardiness, but everybody knows how to reach me. I'm all over the place with my cell phone. I'm always a phone call away. Thank you, Alderman Clark Hubbard. Alderman Sonye? I'll do the same thing. I'll start with an apology. Uh, my reason was different. I thought we began at 530 today. So after I was in a meeting with our building commissioner actually talking about some vacancies and things and thought we were OK. Um, but I do appreciate um, all the women Velasquez, um, your L.A. reached out and sent a text and I was like, oh, my goodness, it's 530. Um, but to that end, my apologies and my apologies, too, on behalf of my other colleagues who are not able to be here today. Um, I'm just really glad that you all took the time to be here and that you you know you trust us enough to believe that we do want to hear from you that we do want to listen to you and that we have a genuine interest in wanting to make entrepreneurship easier in our city I um, mean I definitely want to take my hat off to Chairwoman Velasquez for coordinate this because I know how much work you put into this I know how you've been thinking really ingenuitively about how to have these conversations and how to engage the various different stakeholders and I'm also really happy with where we're meeting today with SODC for hosting us and that we chose to bring the committee out into the community and specifically where we are um, because you know, I think it's really important that we be as accessible as possible and that we go to the places. I think entrepreneurship in the city of St. Louis is hard, period. But obviously, if you're dealing with um, other various other factors, be it public safety, be it but what I just talked about with vacancy, they can make it harder. And obviously, certain areas have those challenges in addition to just the challenge of entrepreneurship. So just thank you all for being here. Thank you, Chairwoman, for your efforts for coordinating this. Um, and I hope you'll continue to follow us along and see what we do. And I hope you'll hold um, us accountable and hold us to the fire for um, really looking intentionally and hopefully eventually having some uh, policy suggestions for how we can make some of these things uh, move forward and make some of these things easier and streamlined for you all. Thank you, Alderwoman Sanye. Um, we have actually one more speaker, and we're going with our uh, theme of this meeting going a little bit out of order, and that's okay. Uh, <laughs> we would love to hear it, so um, please. And then I'm going to just, if you can just raise your right hand, and do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Where to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. And if you could just obviously say your name if you live in the city, your ward, and then tell us about yourself and your business. Absolutely. Uh, Miranda Witherspoon. I am not a city resident. However, my city is local, my business, sorry, is located in the city. Um, and so I just wanted to speak on behalf of myself and other small businesses. I'm a MWBE certified uh, firm in the city of St. Louis, as well as federally certified, state level, all of these things, right? And here recently, I'm just trying to navigate the contract process, and it doesn't seem transparent at all. Um, between the certification body at the airport and the supply division, there are a lot of challenges. Um, I have been waiting for a bid proposal from the supply division. I do portable restrooms, and so it's been a lot of back and forth, which says to me that the information does not exist. And so as a business owner, I'm concerned about what this process looks like. Um, the opportunities, I'm concerned about what that looks like. Um, this has been a lot of back and forth and a lot of time. I'm a small business owner, so I don't have that kind of time, but I have to make that kind of time. And I think about the other small business owners who are also facing these challenges, who do not have the time, who do not have the resources to work with all to make sure that they, they get the opportunities. And so I am personally interested in what the city of St. Louis will be doing to support MWBEs as we move forward, given that the process does not seem very transparent. It does not seem very transparent. Thank you. Before you mm -hmm. go, I actually, I'm going to ask, and it's good to see you. It's been a, it's been a minute. <laughs> um, I don't know if, so, so I know that there's been some reconfiguration of certification um, with yeah. the MB, uh, I always say MB Weeby, but that's not how you say it. The M and women, the minority and women owned businesses. I don't know if there's somebody from SLDC who might just want to comment on where, how some of that transition is going. Yeah, so I've, I've been up to brought up to speed on the certifying piece. I guess for me, my biggest pain point has been the supply division. 
Um, I have no idea what's going on, why it's so hard to get a bid proposal that went out. Um, information seems to be a little outdated. Information seems to precede the folks who are there. It just seems a little questionable. And so um, I know for myself, um, I have been able to, you know, get contracts through my certification. But now that I'm in a new next code, it seems a little like um, not clear. No, that's and fair. So, that's very helpful. So I'm going to just uh, pivot over and, and see if our my fellow committee members have any questions for you before I ask any questions. Alder Lady uh, Clark Hubbard. And I think that we did have a hand up that wants to respond. Um, did you want to respond? Oh, okay. I want to respond to my certification. I was going to do that. Yeah. But. I think let's, Alder Monsignor, do you have any questions? Just was curious, how long have you been in a process with your waiting on the bid proposal response? Um, July 29th. Of last, of July 29th, 2024. I was expecting a call today from the commissioner. I did not get the call. I went there twice in person. Um, I asked for the information in person. I was told by a staff person that it would take a while, and I shared that I was happy to wait. Then they said they, would not, they could not give it to me. They had to email it in the morning. And so I did get the email the next morning, um, but it's been quite challenging to get this information. Do you have any idea in other areas that have like similar processes, what their timelines are? If that's not a question for you, that's okay. I'm just curious. The timeline for receiving a bid, um, anybody else I can ask, I, I get it right away. I'm not sure why I was taking so long to get the bid other than it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. I don't have any other questions for you, but thank you for speaking and thank you for coming here and thank you for being a business owner and, and making it work. Yeah, <laughs> thank you all for being here as well. <laughs> and then uh, I was gonna see, Stacy. do you just wanna generally respond to the changes in certification why we have you here and we can get it on video so folks can, so it can be a resource? See what we're gonna do with this mic. Can you hear me? We got. Okay. Do I have to raise my hand and all that? Uh, actually, actually, you okay. do. Thank I, you. Thank I you, I you for reminding me. I know. So. <laughs> do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please right. proceed. No problem. My name is Stacy Fowler. I'm the senior vice president for minority and small business development uh, empowerment. Excuse me. I don't even know my title for the uh, SLDC. And so, as of the middle of July of this year. Uh, we decided to stop our contract with uh, the airport for providing certification services. And as of June 21 of this year, we stopped taking new applications. And we are now in what we're calling that transition period from now until September the 3rd, which is when we will start taking new applications at this location. And so uh, we will only be responsible for MBE, WBE, Certifications, the airport will continue to do DBE and their concessions um, at the airport uh, certification. And we provide other supportive services for those individuals and business owners that want to understand what certification is about. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 o'clock, we do something called Digging Through the Weeds of Certification. It's more of a round table where you can come and ask your questions. You can understand what the certification process is. You can, you know, we can make sure you understand the checklist and all the information you need so that when September 3rd comes and we click that button on, you'll have all your documents and your information. You can come get on a laptop here in the center and actually upload your information and submit your applications. Great. Thank you, Stacy. Or thank you, Ms. Fowler. Uh, questions from any of my fellow committee women? I don't have any questions, just thank you. And in addition to that, can you share the contact information, how they can follow along sure. and get signed They up? can follow up by calling 314-617-0360. That's 314-617-0360. Or you can send us an email at certification at stlouis-mo.gov. That's certification without an S. Hmm. Had that problem uh, at stlouis-mo.gov. Thank you, Alderwoman Sonye. I'm excited that you guys are switching that over to you all's purview. I've heard a lot of um, a lot of 
kind of issues and challenges um, with the way that the process was set up. So I'm very hopeful that you, I mean, I'm glad you also didn't take all of it on because I would hate to see us overwhelm ourselves and be yes. unrealistic with our capacity. Right. So I'm glad to see that we're kind and of delegating. And we really only do MBEWBE. Uh, they do federal, which is what the DBE and the concessions are with, within the airport. So we're just taking back the, the portion that kind of affects our MBEs and WBEs, our small and minority businesses in the community. Not that they can't get DBE certified. Also, if they want that, they just would have to work with the airport. Understood. Well, other than that, just thank you, Miss Fowler. I've You're welcome. A, I think you were, and you were also involved in opening up this place and yes, getting it up and going back in my school board days. So yes. I'm glad to see that you <laughs> exactly. are still here. I'm still it. here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, thank you. I want to thank echo you. thanks again to you, Miss Fowler. And, and really, can we just give a round of applause to the SLBC and Northside Economic Empowerment folks. We do this for you. <laughs> it's not us. <laughs> well, it's a team effort, right? Yes. And this and this committee, what I've just what I've been very grateful for and pleased is um, the openness that we've been able to work with SLDC. And, and I know that we've had a few meetings and that we've only had one bill, but we've got some good ideas and legis for legislation and really um, working with you all collaboratively, not just to have bills for bill's sake, but to really address um some problems with actual solutions that are needed so just thank you for all your work and i know that we've got more meetings yeah i'm looking at you <laughs> catch up on um so with that uh i will entertain a motion to excuse our colleagues so moved. Second. reluctantly but yes they're excused um and then i will uh uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any written testimony for today? Thank you. And then with that, I will entertain a motion uh, to adjourn. So moved. Thank you all. <laughs>